of the Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes podcast. I'm Bert Lepore. He's Damian Monte Carlo. We're hanging here with Angry Mike G. And today, we talk Guns N' Roses. We build our perfect illusion record. All right. Welcome to Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes, episode seven. Uh, today, we're talking about... Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion, one and two. And uh, in the mixtapes theme, we're going to make a mixtape of uh, the 13 best songs from uh, both those records, if they were one album. And uh, there was 30 songs total on that record. came out in September 17th, 1991. Uh, taking, going back in time, 1991, George Bush was the president. Uh Chicago Bulls won their first NBA championship. Pittsburgh Penguins won their first NHL championship. Most popular song was uh, Justify My Love. Remember that <laughs> video? Yeah. Controversial Justify video. Justify My Love. Who, who was Man. it? I forget who that was. It was Madonna. Madonna. She had the boobies. Madonna, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. CNC Music Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Going to make you sweat. Yeah, what baby. Most popular movie was Terminator 2. Of course, Which, uh, is goes in with this. Uh, Robin Hood, Prince, Prince of Thieves. Oh. <laughs> Home Alone was also ninety-one. Later in the year, Sons of the Lambs. It's a pretty movie. good year. A pretty uh, good year. Yeah, dude. Even like ninety-one, we had Nirvana came out with that. Never mind. Soundgarden, Bad Motor came Finger. Out, I think it came out the same day as Use Your Illusion Records, September seventeenth, nineteen ninety-one. I think also Pearl, Metallica Pearl, had their Metallica album. Black. Per, before, Pearl Jam but, 10. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was like, yeah, that was like the changing, uh, you know, the changing of, of the guard, you know. Yeah. That yeah much, I, I was broke that scene. year. You were broke. Yeah, with, all those, yeah. with all those albums coming out, I was broke. I mean, dude, I that was, was uh, a lot of shit. I was a freshman in high school. I started September 91. <laughs> How were you guys? I was, uh, wow. So I was in the 11th grade at that point. So if that gives you any idea about my age. <laughs> I got to count on my fingers. I was born in 73. So what's that? 93 would have been 20. I guess I was 18. Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> Man. Uh, I, I just remember because I bought those and I taped them onto a cassette tape. Those long ones. And I had one on one and the other on the other one. Well, and that's all I, I remember... listened to for the first few months of, of school that year was boom, put one on. That was over. Boom, put the second one on. That was my what? hallway music. Sometimes One of the, the, the cool things about it, I remember when I was a kid, I read an interview in like Hip Raider magazine with Duff McKagan. <laughs> and he said, you know, the, uh, the reason why, one of the reasons why they did the two record thing is because they wanted to put out, obviously, as many songs as possible. But you got a couple buddies. Okay. You buy User Illusion 1, I'll buy User Illusion 2, and we'll tape each other for it. I remember he said he's probably going to get in trouble with the record label by saying that, but, right. you know, that's how it was. I mean, that's that would have been 30 bucks for it there. What, what teenagers got 30 bucks? Well, listen, I'm sure when we get into it, we'll talk about it, but my opinion was they should have just made one goddamn really good record that was just as good as Appetite, and it would have been. And then, on the other hand, all them other songs, which could have been maybe like another ep acoustic thing like they did with lies and then yeah, had yeah good shit there it yeah, just, they could have put it out somewhere between a <laughs> user illusion and a chinese democracy we wouldn't have to wait that long for listen i love that record i don't care what anybody <laughs> says <laughs> well there was you know there was a big layoff i mean you had appetite that came out like 87 and then lies came out like the end of 88 i think and then you had like two three years like there was like no Guns N' Roses. I mean, I was like, man, when is a new record coming out? And then, you know, it came out three years after, but hey, we got two albums worth. But dude, that, you I know what? The video dude, they were putting first. out, yeah, the, vid the video came out in June, I think, of 91. But dude, they're pu pumping out videos up until like 93, 94. I mean, yeah. just for those two records. So technically, I mean, they could have put out, they could have put it out in 91. They could have put the second one out in. 92 or 93 but yeah. i guess you know it, i mean hey it worked out perfect for them they yeah. both debuted at one and two i mean oh dude i remember charts, tower so. records did like a midnight thing i think if i can remember yeah and people were outside mm -hmm. it was crazy packed with the news it's a huge deal i mean and you know mentioning terminator too i mean you uh you could be mine that was a cool video right. you know it was oh a yeah video. 
it's a lot of hype, you know, with the, just with the movie alone, and then let alone first Guns N' Roses song in you know three years or whatever. Yeah, dude, pe- I mean, people was, people were loving it. They really they really were, and um, I mean Guns N' Roses was they ruled in '91, man. They uh, they they ruled, uh, you know, from uh, once uh, once they tore with Aerosmith, yeah, yeah. From, you know, from yeah. Appetite uh, on. I mean, dude, that was the sh- first. That was the first concert that I went to that you know, Aver Smith and uh, Guns N' Roses that it was actually packed. The spectrum was packed before the with opening. the opening band. It's never packed. It was like not a seat yeah. available. It was crazy. All right, let's uh, move on to Use Your Illusion. Let's start out with Use Your Illusion 1. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Dame, first we're going to start off with a uh, first track is right next door to hell, Dame. Yeah, uh, I like this tune. I mean... I wouldn't put it on the on the mixtape. I mean, but uh, you know, I like it. It's it's got a, it's got a, a punky vibe. Uh, you know, to me, it's it's sort of it's sort of a filler track, I guess. You know, I don't hate it, but you know, not a good opener track. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I think it's a good opener track. Um, it's very aggressive. It gets things going. It kicks things off. You think I would like it, but it's just it's kind of mediocre, but it does come in with a bang. It's got all the elements, but something it's not good enough to make the mix. So right right next door to hell, not making the cut. Yeah, it's not making it for me either. Okay, let's move on to uh, number two, Dustin Bones. Uh, This one I like and, uh, you know, it's it's cool. Like Izzy singing on it. I guess it's like a co-lead vocal, but he sings like the majority song, and yep. then Axel comes in. It, I think it's it's a cool tune. It's got a cool, mm-hmm. cool vibe, you know. It's, it's got a you know, you know, it's got Izzy's voice on, which is which Sounds is rare. Weird. I mean, I remember being a little disappointed. I, you know, what, what are what's Izzy singing? Why is Duff <laughs> singing on some of these tracks? But you know, it was it was cool that they did that, and especially like Axel with you know with his ego out of control back then. I mean, for him to let those guys shine, you know, in the spotlight was something rare, you know, for nah, any nah, band, he, really. He probably figured it was a piss break in concert or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I needs a break. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Mike, any thoughts on 14 years for you? I am oh, just Dustin Bones. Bones. Dustin Bones. Dustin I'm sorry, Bones. Dustin Bones. I'm yeah, man, I mean, I think that's kind of a killer track. I think I like just about every song as he did on the album. I thought his yeah. songs are really good. All three were good. Um, for me, Dustin Bones, Izzy sounds fantastic on it. His mix with Axel coming in and do his part. It's just a really, really good song. And I do like all the Izzy songs a lot. Yeah. Um, his voice is cool, man. I mean, it just works. It's a cool little song. Um, yeah, I mean, I love it. Dustin Bones makes the list, right? Yeah, it's good for me. Makes the list. All right, let's move on to track number three. Live and let die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's a good cover, and and I do, you know, I do like the Paul McCartney version. I think this is, you know, it, it does do it justice. I just felt like, I don't know, dude. I just wanted to, uh, you know, put another original song on there. You know, right. How about well, they did, got- I think they did a great version of it. You know, yeah, yeah, Mike. Great version of it, but I guess I wasn't a fan of the original song, which is odd because it's probably it should be in my wheelhouse, but right. it, it's not. I wasn't a fan of it. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, really good cover of it. I mean, it's pretty faithful to the original. Really, really strong cover. It has every elements of a song that I like with that nice breakdown part and all mm-hmm. that. But I don't know why I'm not crazy about the song in general. I mean, they did a perfect version of it. Yeah. I mean, the wing song, you know, it's good for what it is, but it just don't it just don't do nothing for me. Like it just I mean, I don't get it either, but it it was in a movie. It was I think it was on the soundtrack. No, no, that wasn't one. It might have been one. Was it a James Bond movie? Well, that was a James original. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, live and let die. I don't need to hear it. Don't make the list for me. Mm, Not here. It's another one. Me too. Out the window, yeah. even though it's good. Yeah. It's out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Don't Cry. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, 
I don't know why. Now it's, a, it's another one. Why, why do they put two versions of it? It's, it's no it, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird, but you know, I, I like the tune and, uh, if you look on YouTube, there's a version of them doing this from like 85 or 86 when it's they been were around. just it's been a around club a band. Yep. Dude, and they're playing. I can't remember if it's just like is Izzy and Axel or if it's Izzy, Axel and Slash, but they're playing acoustic guitars in like a really small, almost looks like a lounge, not even a, 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 a like a club, like a little lounge. Right. And they're playing an acoustic version of this song and nobody is giving a shit you know like yeah. it, it, like they it, normally it, don't it, give a shit when you're not right. known <laughs> but you know, you know it's funny like hey you know what if one of our bands went out and did acoustic and somebody filmed it what do you hear you hear all people talking in the background Absolutely. not paying attention and that's how this is you hear them they have no these people have no fucking idea what they're witnessing Dude, nobody you know? knows anything's good until somebody friggin' tells them it's good yeah so i thought that was it was yeah. pretty interesting and it's cool it was pretty much i mean the same as it was back then you know to what they recorded a few years later yeah man what do you think mike great song i mean i'm not a big ballad guy or power ballad guy back in the day but th this one this was great song this would be one that i wouldn't skip on the album i would i would listen to this and like just you want something when you're walking that's going to like especially when you're listening to headphones or whatever right that's just keep you you know, in that pace or whatever. This one, I actually, I actually didn't keep you keeps your head bumping. <laughs> yes, <laughs> is this Shannon Hoon on it? Shannon Hoon, yeah, dude. I yeah. was say, was this part of the trilogy? Yes, it was. It was. I was. I'm going to get into that now. But uh, yeah, that was um, written prior to Appetite, like Dame said. Um, it didn't make the first record for some odd reason, I guess. I, I don't know, but I don't know why it didn't make it. But it was been yeah, around I, for a I, long time. I, I, I can't. I can't see it on there. You know. Yeah, it, it don't fit, and that's probably why it didn't make it. Yeah. But it, it's a fantastic song, like you said. Yeah. Shannon Hoon, who did some backing vocals on the record, he was even in the video, right? I think he was in the yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's a trilogy with November Rain and Estranged, also. Which, you know, the story is that was it that Axel and Izzy was seeing the same girl at the same time or something, something so. crazy like that. Yeah, I don't know if they were at the same time. Or at the uh, same time. <laughs> you, you, you never. <laughs> That's rock and roll. <laughs> right. Okay, hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, they were doing everything, I think, at that time. But Don't Cry, fantastic song, and it absolutely makes the list. Everybody agree? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, The Perfect Crime or Perfect Crime. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, d definitely one that I I wasn't really fond of. You know, the only thing I really remember is I mean it's a it's another like fast kind of you know faster punkier tune, but like the chorus, you know, goddamn right. it's a perfect crime, motherfucker, motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it didn't do anything for me. You know, no, I, I'm gonna say it's it's fast. It's punky. Axel's flying vocally. He's friggin' flying on this yeah. one. I thought it was okay. It's pretty good, but it misses the list for me, man. And yeah. it's like it misses the list for all three of us. Yeah, so, um, it's, a, it's a no. <laughs> it's it's a no. It's uh, uh, it's, it's a no. <laughs> yeah. How about um, track number six? When you use your illusion one, you ain't the first. Dude, uh, yeah, I, you're not getting anything from me on this. I mean, it, it should have been on. Uh, it probably would have would have been good on lies. Lies, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, it, it just. I don't know. It, it totally it's good, falls but... flat. Yeah. I mean, it's the type of song like you know, if, if you're around, everybody's like you know, feeling good, drinking, and doing whatever. You know, you pull out the acoustic guitar. It's the type of song, you know. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I could I could definitely do without it. It's a dude. It's a definite like deep cut oh yeah you know, definitely deep track like if they played it live i think people would be super surprised but i'm not yeah uh, it's, it's not for me yeah yeah um i mean for me it's got some cool cool stuff in there but like i said you know earlier that if guns and roses did another acoustic record it would make it yeah mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. for this record no way no way. No need to make this list. Yeah. You know what nope. I mean? No need to make this list. 
That's a stone cold no for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, so, it's a hard. It's a hard no. A, it made none of our lists. So yeah. So it's a. You're out of here. <laughs> that that's uh that's gone. Let's move on to track number seven. Bad obsession. This is this is one of my favorites. This one. It's cool. It's a just a cool fun tune and uh, Michael Monroe's on it. I'm a huge. Michael Monroe nut swinger. So uh, he plays harmonic and sax on it. Hey, so let me ask you because I always get this wrong. It's Hanoi Rocks or is it Yanni Rocks? I can't never. I used to yeah. see magazines. <laughs> I should never be able to pronounce it. Is Hanoi. it Hanoi Rocks? Hanoi, yeah. What does that and, mean? Uh, Hanoi is uh, in uh, Finland or something crazy. No, no, dude, it's uh, Vietnam. I think. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> People are gonna kill us if you know. I'm pretty sure it, <laughs> Hanoi is 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 Vietnam. I'm pretty I'm I'm looking at this. Yeah, it, it is it is Vietnam. Yeah. It's Vietnam. After yeah. brought in Oregon, I don't know where the hell I'm at. So <laughs> I'm big geography wise. I'm fucking bad. Yeah, Hanoi rocks, and uh, you know it should be noted that uh, they came out in, like the late seventies, early eighties from Finland, and they're hugely influential on on Izzy. Yeah, and uh, Izzy told Axel about them, let them listen to them. And they, and the whole band were like huge Hanoi Rocks fans and nobody in America knew who the hell they were. And then when, when GNR became, you know, pretty known late eighties, they reissued all of Hanoi Rocks's records under their own record label, Uzi Suicide. So yeah, I, yeah. I guess having him on there was kind of like uh, a little, little yeah. thing for him, a little rub. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little cool, rub. Yeah. But yeah, I used to always see that name in pictures and magazines. I haven't, I never heard until way later. But they looked like they were a huge influence on a lot of the glam stuff and all, all that. Stuff. Yeah, but 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 not, uh, uh, you know, image wise. Yeah, but not. I mean, they don't sound like they got their own. I thing. mean, they might look like like Poison or early Guns N' Roses, but they don't sound like that at all. They're I mean, grittier they had, than it, that. It's it's more to me. They were like uh, slightly heavier, punkier Rolling Stones. You know. But yeah. Michael Moreau's solo albums he's been putting out the past 10 years is probably some of the best music I've ever heard. I mean, it's amazing. Like, yeah. And that stuff is more, you know, in our wheelhouse, I think. Right. Especially if you're or any Guns N' Roses fan. But this, his solo material the past 10 years, I would highly recommend. But yeah, it's dude, cool that he's on his track. Really it's like funny. His when they came out, they kind of had, Guns N' Roses kind of had that look. And then once They look like them, yeah. Dude, once grunge hit, Axel's hair went fucking down. It went straight <laughs> yeah, yeah. down. <laughs> Well, Axel you know was I, like he, shit. He got he got rid of that that high hair pretty pretty early actually. He had to. He had yeah. he had no he, he had to. Otherwise he would have been with the whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mike, anything on bad obsession? No, just a killer track, man. It was you know it was what Guns N' Roses do. They write songs about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, for me, it was a really bad obsession. Is a really really good song. It reminded me of Aerosmith, like early Aerosmith in there somewhere. Yeah, it's got the little honky tonk going on, which I'm usually not a fan yeah. of, but it, it worked yeah. for this song. It was pretty cool. It, it's definitely it's a fun song. I think it makes the list, right? It makes the list, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Bad obsession. Put it on the list. Mm -hmm. so that's another three all the way, I believe. Yeah, right? Yeah, we all agree yeah. on that one, man. Number eight, back <laughs> off, bitch. Damn, any uh, thing on that? I, I like this one. This is also an early one. Uh, it was written, you know, pre appetite. Something they used to play in the in the uh, club days. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's got a, it's a cool, you know, it's got a, it's got a cool vibe. It kind of reminds you of, you know, for people that say like, you know, they lost their their edge or whatever, you know, when they put this record out, or you know, it doesn't. It's not like appetite. Well, you know, it was. It is. I mean, it's. It, it could have been on appetite. It yeah. was from that era, but it was pre appetite. Uh, yeah, right before appetite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was demos from. Other from that era, you know, if you got the Appetite for Destruction box set, but yeah, I think it's a cool tune, man. I, I like it. It was co written by with Axel with uh Paul Tobias, who that's one of his friends, right? His buddy from Indiana who wound up joining the band like right around the time. Remember when I did a uh, <coughs> interview with a vampire, they did the cover, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, yeah. Well. Axel one he brought this guy in to replace uh, Gilby, right? And they weren't that happy with him, I don't think. Right? Nah, guys, right? Nah, Slash fucking hated him. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And that was like the beginning. That's you know, slash. That was out of there. Well, what yeah. was uh, what's the comment you always hear from um, ah, the drummer it's Matt Sorm. Sorm. Matt Sorm always says, You listen to Sympathy for the Devil, that's the band breaking up right there. Yeah, yeah. So, Mike, anything on back off, bitch, Mike? Uh, I mean, it, for me, it was kind of just there. It wasn't one of my favorite ones on the track. I didn't hate it, but it was just, I don't think I put that on the list. Yeah, for me, it's got that grit Guns N' Roses style, and it's a pretty decent song. The more and more I listen to it, I think I like it more, but it don't make the list. For me, yeah, it don't I, make the list. I liked it. I know you guys didn't. But yeah. yeah they, sorry, Dame. They, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we all are going to have one or two of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, Back Off Bitch, not bad. A cool, deeper cut, I think. Yeah, it, it's all right. It's, I think it gets better the more you hear it, you know? Yeah, it, it grew on me the past few years. You know, previous to that, I wasn't really a huge fan, but I just started right. really listening to it. Yeah, I think. Years ago. I mean, we put on a Use Your Illusion this week. To, you know, we know the songs, but to, you know, to re listen to them. And some of the songs, I'm like, oh, it really ain't that bad. I thought I didn't like this. And Back Off Bitch was one of them. I'm like, it don't make the list. I don't think it's good enough to make the 13, but it's pretty good. But just, it just misses the list for me. Yeah. Let's move on to. Um, Number nine, double talking jive. Yeah, this is a cool tune, man. I, I I like this, and it's uh, it's probably ha- it probably has my uh, my favorite slash guitar solo of all time, man. That yeah. that whole end, I mean, it's a cool format. It's only two, it's like two choruses, and then it's guitar solo throughout the end of the song, and then it and then it breaks down to some cool like Spanish guitar, right? Real cool. I mean, it's slash goes off, man. Actually, the whole band is just like rocking, like. Yeah, during that whole solo part. Mm-hmm. I, I like this song a lot. This is a good one. I, I when I saw them in concert, I probably saw them right before Use Your Illusion <laughs> came out, and this might be like the first few songs I heard off of it. I'm like, wow, I was like, is he singing this one? So it was kind of a surprise, kind of like a little yeah change. Yeah, uh, for me, Double Talking Jive, it's good. It's good. It's it was. Uh, I think Mike, you were actually telling me that I looked it up. It was based on a true story. I think the first I don't know line, what the right? whole song is, but I know the whole the whole first line was uh, found a head and arm in a garbage can. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Like supposedly that actually happened like a block or two away from the studio that they were recording. <laughs> so they just threw it into the song. L- little inspiration there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, double talk and jive. It makes the list. I always like the uh, <laughs> the chorus. You know. Double talking job, get the money, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he gets that high voice there. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. So we're going to move on to a big song here. Number 10, November Rain. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> but right, right. There's, there's no denying it's, it's, it's a masterpiece of, of a song. You know, it's, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's an epic tune. I mean, and he and he, he had that song before <coughs> Guns N' Roses was even a band. Like he wrote yeah. that, you know, I think what I think he wrote that song when he was a teenager. So he's just going to show you he's probably working on that tune for like 10 years. But it's they said there's a piano version of it. I never heard it, though. I guess when he first. Yeah. Played. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I heard an acoustic version of it, too. It was, it was really, really. Cool. But <laughs> yeah, it's just a great tune. It's like epic tune. It's got a lot of different. A lot of different parts in that. I mean, yeah, great solo by Slash. Yeah, I mean, great solo Legendary. by Slash. Great, man. great video. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, epic song, epic song, a huge song for them. Like, what do you think on November Rain, Mike? I mean, I heard it a billion times. I mean, on MTV, <laughs> the radio. Yeah, great song. I mean, I really don't need to hear it again. But yeah, I mean, it's it's just a great song, masterpiece. Even yeah. if he wrote it when he was younger, I mean that even just shows the the writing skills, right? There. How good how good yeah. the guy so, actually is, yeah. I'm sure they beefed it up a little bit, but yeah, um, yeah, it's part of that epic. It's part of the whole mm-hmm. the whole epic, and um, I know, I think it was to say, "Don't cry, November rain is strange." It was, it was also November rain. I think inspired Del James, one mm-hmm. of their longtime buddies, to write a, a story. And, Without um, you. Without you, right? Exactly, yeah. And then you know, and it was based around them three, you know, that trilogy, I think. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's you know, that guy's been with them forever, man. Yeah, forever. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. November rain, 
absolutely there's no way it don't make the list it makes the list yep okay number 11 the garden uh i, I never really liked this one <laughs> it uh it, it just I, I remember when it came out and uh, I, I just remember driving around my buddy's Camaro <laughs> a lot yeah. and he was a huge Guns N' Roses fan. He used to love this song and I just fucking hated it. <laughs> right, really? <laughs> yeah. I remember the video, I remember the, the video came out maybe like later, like ninety-three. Like mm -hmm. that's how I mean they were just pumping out singles and videos like for years. I mean yeah. but uh yeah, I don't know. I just really never just never really did anything for me. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I, I, I like this one. I like this one a lot. And, and, and I mean, come on, Alice Cooper was in it. It, it, it yeah. was just a. It was kind of a, a deviation from kind of what they normally do. It was a slower paced song. It was, but yeah, I mean, it had some really cool parts in there. It, it was probably one of the more memorable songs on the album for me. Yeah, sorry, I mean, sorry again, Damien. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for me, I love the melody. I like Axel's voice on it. I love the Coopers in it. Um, yeah, the garden, that little melody for me works. So, uh, the garden makes the list. Okay. Let's move on to number 12 garden of Eden. Cause we need two garden songs. Back <laughs> garden to back. Eden, to back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like this one, you know, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it, it falls in the middle. Like I don't, I'm not in love with it. I don't hate it. I like it, you know. It's just uh, I thought the video was really cool, and I I don't think that was really done at all at the time. Now you see, dude, you see shit like that all the time. Where remember the video it was just one camera. It was them in a small room, Wrapped one camera. Around. Yeah, uh, filming the whole band. <laughs> it was you know high energy punk tune. It was you know weird choice for a single, but then you got to figure like at that time, you know grunge was happening with the punk element yeah. and. It, you know, it probably did fit, you know, with what was going on. But, yeah, I mean, I, I like the tune. I could take it or leave it, you know. Mike? Eh, I mean, it, it, I, I'm pretty much on the fence with that one. I'll, I'll say with Amy, take it or leave it. It wasn't one of my favorites. Didn't hate it, but just. Yeah, it, it yeah. absolutely does nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> the video is cool. It does nothing for me. So, um, you know, two out of three or Zero out of three or whatever you want to call for this one. It's a swing and a miss. Okay. Let's move on to, as the record, I think it's worse at this point. Let's move <laughs> on to, uh, let's move on to uh, Don't Damn Me, number 30. Yeah, I, I like this one. It's a good tune. Uh, not really much, I mean, to say about it, but I dig it, you know. Yeah, I mean. It, it was, was, it was one, of, one of my favorite ones, actually, on the record. I really? Know, I really? can't talk too much about it. <laughs> really i'm surprised yeah. wow yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it let him talk yeah, about damn, it yeah let, uh, let us know why i'm having a brain fart <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at my list and i was like wow is that a typo excuse me <laughs> <laughs> but i know i i know like yeah i like the tune I, uh, I put, he I likes put it. it That's all uh, that counts is that he likes it. It's like Mikey. He likes it. <laughs> he likes it. That fucking Mike don't like nothing. Angry <laughs> Mike hates everything. Hey, I've that been good guy. so far Woo. on this one. How many, how many did I really hate on this album so far? So Depends how much Two, you smoke. Maybe. <laughs> uh, dude, I can't believe why I'm, why I'm having a terrible brain fart on this song. Yeah, I mean, for me... <laughs> Don't damn me! Don't yeah! Don't damn me! Was uh, it was written as a backlash to uh, all the backlash he got from uh, one in a million. There oh we yeah, go. dude! I, yeah, I love this fucking tune. Yeah, and don't damn me! Either. Yeah. Well, it misses the list, but it could make the bonus track. Yeah, Dame See, says when, so. When I submitted my list, it was on there. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I was pretty hot on it at the time. Right now, I, I you know, yeah, I mean, if, for a bonus track. Because remember, might, originally was, we only decided on twelve songs, yeah, yeah. and I think I when, I when I said, "Oh shit, I forgot it's only 12 and I removed this. But then we decided to go for thirteen. But yeah, yeah I mean, why not? Yeah, but uh, th maybe that could be like they used to do in the nineties, where you had the CD, and if it was like thirteen tracks, if you waited like another minute on track eighty-five, it would pop <laughs> up. You know. Or, like, or, or you buy the cassette has a bonus track or something. Yeah. Know? The cassette single. Do you remember the cassette single? Yeah, I used to buy them all the time. 
Dude, I used to work at Strawberry Records when I was younger. So uh, I worked there for years, man. And um, they used to the cassette singles, man. They were they were big. They yeah. were big. Working in the record store was cool. The only oh. bad thing was they had this cassette that you had to play through the month. It was whatever artist they were featuring. So you heard the same freaking cassette. Oh, God. oh dude. Oh, you know, pop eats itself. I heard a thousand fucking times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. The new song from Pop Eats Itself at Strawberries Records, you know, and I'm like, dude, which might be an okay album now. I don't know. But uh, at the time, I was like, Pop yeah, Eats Itself. I don't know too much about them, but me neither. I remember the name from that freaking tape, though. I know the name. I just never really. Yeah, it might be good. They might be good. We have to check it out. We have to check well, it out. We'll see. We'll, we'll check so it out. Don't damn me. It misses the list. Yeah. Number 14, Dame Bad Apples. Uh, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't uh, I don't hate the tune. It's cool. It's, you know, it kind of fits in that whole bad obsession, uh, you know, vibe. You know, it, to me, it was like, uh, you know, Bad Obsession's little brother. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's an okay tune. You know, to me, it's typical filler track, I think. I yeah. don't know. What do you think, Mike? Same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's it's there. It's good. It's not bad. Yeah. It's just yeah. I mean, for me, it's really not my thing because I guess it's got that kind of honky tonk thing. It's almost it almost reminds me of "Give Me Shelter" from Cinderella. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. you know. And um, you know, I love Cinderella, but I didn't need that whole. I don't know what it is that gospely kind of thing going on during the car. I don't know what the hell it was, but. I'm like, yeah, oh, man, what the hell is this? Yeah, you know? yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of good songs, not to go too far in the Cinderella, but there's a lot of good songs in a Heartbreak Station record. And even though that was a single and had some cool stuff and it was catchy, that part, nah, the, that hockey tonk <laughs> thing is rough with me, man. As soon as you're yeah. bing, 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 bing on the keyboards, I'm like, uh, you know? I, I, I did like that record, and probably because, <coughs> I, I, you know, I uh, outplayed the... Uh, overplayed the first two albums so to listen to it now it's like fresh you know what a cinderella or are you here the yeah. guns and roses no, 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 the uh that's heartbreak station great that, record that record yeah great so record. i so now back then i wasn't really too fond of it but now i love it it's got a lot of a lot of blues stuff going on in there and yeah you know but to give me shelter i'm like ah, oh, that's the single i'm like uh but yeah i mean that that this song you know bad apples kind of fits in that that whole vibe you know yeah it it, it does but uh Another one. It misses the list. Yeah. Dead Horse. Dead Horse. It was it was okay. I mean, I don't another one. I, I don't I don't totally hate it. Like, but uh it, it, it was okay. I mean, I remember the video was weird. Axel playing the guitar. I was like, that that take that guitar off, man. That looks yeah. fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even but, remember yeah, nothing... the video, but I heard he played guitar on it. Yeah, sick in his life. <laughs> yeah, he's like playing the uh it was a strange, I don't know. Yeah, but I, and then it kicks in. And I think it was a cool, you know. Cool it's another tune. one like, that should have made the make pretend acoustic album that we're putting together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? another one. I mean, maybe slightly better <laughs> than, a, than a filler song. You know, my opinion. You know, but yeah, it's a decent song, but not good enough to make the thirteen that are on the list. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. To number sixteen, the last song on Usually Lose One, Coma. Damn. Yeah, I, I think I think Coma is an awesome <laughs> tune. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, a masterpiece really i mean it's yeah. 10 minutes long i mean another epic song I and mean, they mm -hmm. these guys like they're really stepping it up like these eight nine ten minute songs it's just cool it's got a really cool bass line in it that that you know, guitar for the intro. line that dan and dan and dan oh yeah. it sticks in your head that, that yeah. line's a hook man it's got a lot of cool parts in it yeah man what do you think mike oh yeah great song i mean this is probably one of my favorite ones by them <laughs> i mean it's it from what I understand, this is about Axel and Slash kind of combined uh, their stories about overdosing, and mm. they were in a coma during this, and they were kind of sharing their experiences. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it it's good. It's a long song, but it still stays interesting. It's got a lot of cool parts. Yeah. And coma. Coma makes the list. We're going to move on to Use Your Illusion 2 now. We're going to open it up with Civil War. What do you think, Dame? Yeah, I mean, I love this tune. And uh, it should be noted that uh, <laughs> it's the last song and the only song from this record that uh, Stephen Adler played on. Yeah, it's the last man. song he ever recorded with the band, and it was the <laughs> only one 
that he's on on this record. And uh, from what I what I read a few times is that he did like seventy something drum tracks oh, takes shit. to get this. <laughs> Dude, wow. that's a, I mean, that's wow. a lot of freak. That's a lot of take. All right. Take 73. Dude. <laughs> hey, that, that was like the final rid- straw, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah it, 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 after the 71st take, it was like, all right, you got to get rid of this guy. He almost got Fred Corey. Well, he did get Fred Corey at one part, right? So, no, well, he, no. yeah, he played he played some shows when he broke his arm a few years prior. But, it, I mean, the song in general, I think it's a, I think it's a great tune, man. I love it. No, I mean, I mean, Fred Corey, where he's on the album cover, but he's not on the record. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we call the Fred Corey thing. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny. For years, I had no idea it was St- uh, Stephen Aller was on that. Uh, yeah. Well, they did on the song. When I first heard that, they did it on Farm Aid. Oh, yeah, that's it right. Yeah, Aid. yeah. And I was like, what the hell is this? Before I even go into my little thing with Civil War, Mike, you have any comment on Civil War? No, I mean, it was just a, it was a good tune. I heard it a lot. I mean, it, so it's kind of, but yeah, it was, it was, a, it was definitely one of the tracks. Like, you know, you, you as a kid, you go over somebody's house at a party. That was definitely one of them that was in the mix back then. We were dude, a bunch of metalheads. <laughs> dude, that song is so good. The lyrics are good. The melody is great. Great melody. The, the yeah. build up, the build up of the song and the tension. Yeah. You could feel the tension in that song when it builds up. I mean, it's just, Probably one of their greatest songs that they ever wrote. It's just it, it's a masterpiece. I think it's yeah. And our, uh, yeah, it's like for me, like when I was a kid, like I, I didn't really like songs like that. You know, just just give me like the the real you know the real fast rockers, you know, right, three right. four minute songs. But you know, as I got older and really appreciated you know music more in general, like that that tune, it's like very well written song, man. Yeah, man, G- great song, and it yeah. absolutely makes this list so let's move on to the next one 14 years it's a, it's a, yeah, n- another another filler for me <laughs> nothing n- nothing really special about this one i mean probably probably one of my least favorites yeah yeah what do you think one. yeah mike i didn't hate this song i mean it, it was kind of a, it was another easy song i think he even did it with duff too uh, but i, I mean uh, uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was just kind of there. Listen, man, this, this song for me, and it misses the list. I was outvoted on this guy here, but this one, Izzy, sounds cooler than a motherfucker on this song. <laughs> I mean, dude, he's just, I love it, dude. 14 years in Dustin Bones, I was like, cool cat, brother, cool cat. I was digging it. Yeah. And I love Axel's little screech inside. 14 years don't make the list for the Sorry, podcast. Albert. But it's on my list. <laughs> All right, let's maybe, move on. Maybe to, next time. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe next when we do the you know fiftieth anniversary. <laughs> maybe it'll make yeah. the list, or maybe it'll make the big Guns and Roses list. Who knows? Um, number three, yesterdays. Yeah, for me, this is one of my favorite. <coughs> Actually, it might be my, one of my top five favorite GNR songs. Man, I just I just love it. You know, cool. You know, acoustic driving. It to you know really good lyrics uh yeah this was a single too you know one of the many they put out yeah it's uh, uh what do you think michael and Ab, yesterday uh, uh, for me i mean it was kind of just there i don't i don't <coughs> I, I don't think i put on no i didn't put it on my list i know that no so you got, you got uh, outvoted on this one <laughs> uh, another one be, uh, i got outvoted on this one yeah yeah uh, fair enough what are you gonna do <laughs> but i don't hate the song it just uh, what are you gonna do for me, for me, it's a real good song. It's got great lyrics, and the just the music and the melody just work together so good. It's yeah. a good, it's it's a real good, real good song, man. Real good. He song. sings, Axel sings his ass off on it too, yeah. especially towards the end. You know, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, uh, yesterday's it makes our list. We're gonna move on. Track number four, knocking on heaven's door. This is a oh man. We're going to I don't like this. this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like this one at all. Uh, I and, put this uh, on my list, but oh god, man, I fucking hate this song. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is without a doubt my my like most hated Guns N' Roses song. Really, well, it was another yeah. cover too, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's just, right. But here's the problem. The problem is it's hard to listen to this version 
after you hear the version from the Ritz. That live at the Ritz that was on MTV. Even, even that one I don't like. No. <laughs> wow, nah. really? Yeah. See, the I think it's a real good cover song. I don't like it on the record because I think they get blowed in near the end when they have all the gospel girls and the backup singers. It's just really there's no reason. It was so so much better. I think spoiled maybe by seeing the live at the Ritz because it was such it was so gritty. That concert was so gritty. Yeah. Um, and MTV played the shit out of it. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, for me, it's a good cover. They got a little too freaking fancy near the end of it. So Mike picked it. Me and Dame didn't. It don't make the list. It's wow. out of here. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a great song if you want to go to the bathroom or get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> you, know, you know another reason why why i hate it so much is because <laughs> when i started playing in a band uh me and me and uh frankie meatball <laughs> for uh little our, frankie our, we both started you know playing in bands together it was our first band and like that we both started playing our instruments at the same time was that vicious mentality yeah here so you go is, no, even before we we didn't before even have a name. Okay, cool. Like this song is so easy. It's like two or three chords, and like and Frank would play it on guitar. So we would do like 20, 30 minute versions of it. And it's like <laughs> after a while. I'm so so freaking sick of it. Well, dude. So uh that right there killed me. I talked to little Frankie this week on um, I guess through Facebook or whatever, and he's like, yo, if you need a guest, you ever want me to come on? I said, Frank. Absolutely, but you got to feed a mofo. Bring that Black Sabbath pizza. I told him. Yeah, I said I'm in. Yeah, Frankie Meatball, check him out. Cooking with Frankie Meatball. It's on YouTube, right? Yep. He's doing pretty good, man. He's doing pretty He's good. Doing great, yeah. Yeah, man. Good kid. Well, good guy. He's, I mean, she, I'm calling these kids. I used to, <laughs> I called you. I called you little dame for forty years, and you're bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, taller than me, maybe by an inch, but you're taller than me. But I yeah. still call you his little Dame, little Frank, even though he's, well, Frank might be my size, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> maybe shorter. <laughs> maybe I might have him. I'm, it depends if I'm wearing the boots that day or not. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got them lifts in there, son. <laughs> you know, but check out Frankie. Frankie's Frankie's awesome, man. Frankie's got a great YouTube station. So check out Frankie Meatball. OK, so uh, we're going to move on. Number five. Get in the ring. Uh, I, I liked it when I was a teenager. <laughs> right, yeah, well, yeah. You know, you get know. that angst. Yeah, yeah. You know, I liked it a lot. I remember <laughs> we used to go to uh, this would be like a uh, you guys remember like a bar or restaurant called Philly Rock, and they had oh yeah, they had, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. They had it was it was like a, a Philly vert for people who don't know. It was like a Philly version of like a Hard Rock Cafe with all kinds of memorabilia and stuff. But uh, they had Love a jukebox. Totally yeah, we used to go there every Monday night for 10 cent wings. Mm-hmm. And they had a jukebox. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, would, I would always play the songs with the most curse words in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this song was on whether whether I liked it or not. I mean, right, I, at, right, that, right. at that point, I did, I did really like it. So we would play this song all the time. But now, man, it's just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, this song's the absolute, absolute shits. <laughs> <it's> just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it was that line in there. I think he goes, get in the ring. I'll kick your bitch. Yes. Or something like that. It was <laughs> yeah. just like, it was like talking Bob Guccione Jr. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who did he write for? Like Playboy or well, something like that? Well, I heard Hustle, he was actually. Hustler or Penthouse. Hustler. Or something. Yeah. Hustler. But yeah. I heard he was actually supposed. He was. Well, his son was Geffen, I believe. Oh, really? The, the, I think he was the, the, the president of Geffen at the time or the owner. I, I don't remember. But. Supposedly, Axel was going to fight this guy until he found out that this guy was like, a, like, uh, had years of fighting under his belt, like karate or something like right. that, and he backed out of the whole fight. So he was worried about the karate. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Yeah, it, it's sort. It, this song is it's sort of like the uh, when the hip hop guys they do like their uh, what they, what do they call them? Uh, there's certain songs where they like they call, a call out song or something. Oh when they yeah, call, they call people like a yeah. diss track. Yeah, uh, this track. track exactly right. This is this is his uh, diss track. <laughs> yeah, man, not too good. You know, Mike. Mike used to like that Philly Rockies. I'm sure you had oh, to have yeah, one of those friends man. that would order like 
like 30 wings and not have a dollar in his pocket, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I borrow $3, man? Uh, yeah. I'm not hungry, but let me get one of those wings. <laughs> mm, that's a tasty hey, wing. Let me tell you, Philly Rock had a killer jukebox, by the way. Wait, hold so, on. Yeah, but hold on. Good, yeah. Hold on. Family and friends, Mike is going to tell a story. <laughs> <Get lunch. laughs> right, well, you, you just ruined it. I, I forgot what I was going to say. And, uh, Killer jukebox. Killer jukebox. I mean, it was great atmosphere in there. <laughs> we, plenty of times getting hammered. and oops. I'm surprised I even remember the place. Yeah, I'm, but, I miss that place. Yeah. It was cool. And then it, I don't know what it became after Philly Rock. Now it's like Warm Daddy's, I think, or something like that. It was. I forget what it was after that. Yeah, I don't even remember, man. Remember Walk and Roll? Yeah. The Chinese place. <laughs> it was right next door to it, yeah. <laughs> walk and Roll. We went there one time, and there was just a guy. We, we were looking in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> the guy's over there with, cooking in the walk with a cigarette hanging from his mouth. <laughs> That's old uh, school, baby. That's old yeah, school. Yeah. Flavor. What do you got? What do yeah, you, got? you would go to the diner. What do you want? They got a cigarette in the mouth. <laughs> Classic shit, dude. That's when you could have smoked in the hospital. You know? I remember yeah. those days. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm sure all our parents did. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, moving on to track number six, Dame Shotgun Blues. Yeah, it's an another filler for me, I think. It doesn't never really did anything for me. Uh, not terrible, but you yeah. Know. Mike, anything Hello. on that? Definitely ah. feller, feller. Yeah, it does nothing for me. It's it's, it's feller. Yeah. Shotgun <laughs> blues, just like knocking on heaven's door and getting the ring. They're out of here. No good. Yeah. Okay. No, track number seven. Breakdown. <clears throat> Another one. It, yeah. Does nothing for me either. I mean, just uh, one of, one of the songs I was fast forward. It's a deep track. I mean, if they were pull it yeah. out live, I'm sure a lot of people would be happy about it. But I'm, um, you know. Yeah. What about you, Mike? I mean, I, it was a certain point I liked it, but then it's it, to me, it just kind of <laughs> didn't stand for me. It just kind of went and just yeah, I didn't mean, make the I, list. It, yeah, yeah, I think it's got some cool parts into it. I like some yeah. of Axel stuff in there. Not just good, not good enough to make the thirteen that we that we're going to pick. Nah. So it misses the list. Track number eight, pretty tied up. I like this one. It's cool. Cool, fun tune. Uh, starts out with that cool like uh, <coughs> sitar, like kind of like. Uh, you know, Indian kind of Middle Eastern man, Middle, yeah, Middle Eastern, Eastern Indian style. kind of you know vibe. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I, I I really like this one. It was a cool tune. Yeah, man. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, this is a good tune. I mean, like you said, with the sitar and everything. And I, I even yeah. heard that this was a true story in a certain sense. It is that they went over this uh, dominatrix's house or something like that, and they <laughs> see this guy tied up. I forget what the object was in his mouth, but an onion. He had, had an onion in his was mouth. It, it was it an onion? Right, that was a line of the song. The right? most bizarre or, part. Yeah, yeah. So. They they walked in. They were having drinks or something with this dominatrix chick that they became friends with. Yeah. And they walk in and they see the guy, like in like ladies' underwear and heels on. And he's like taped up with duct, duct tape, tape yeah. with an onion in his mouth. I mean, is it crazy that the weirdest thing about That's the whole funny. situation is the onion? Why yeah. the onion? Yeah. yeah. Weird, man. But pretty tied up. Fantastic. Mm. Song. It, it could yeah. be a lot worse than an onion. So just <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot worse than an onion. Yeah. It's a fantastic song, man. That intro. Wow. That Middle Eastern sound and intro. I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm a sucker for that sound. So yeah. that, yeah, I think it's a fantastic song. Probably one of my favorite Guns N' Roses songs. It's, it's definitely yeah. for me. So Pretty Tied Up absolutely makes the list. Let's move on to the next track. Number nine, Locomotive. Yeah, another one. Uh, I like this. Uh, I, I've always liked this song. It's got some cool, like, uh, odd time parts. Like, uh, I remember reading something with uh, Matt Storm. He said it was really, really difficult for him to play. Really, I mean, some of the, I mean, like, I can't even picture Steve. Imagine Stephen Aller trying to play, play that. Like, if Matt Storm is having a hard time, Stephen Aller being all drugged up trying to trying to play yeah, this song, and, but and Matt's a really good drummer, really good. Drummer. <clears throat> oh, he's great, man. He gets he gets uh, he gets shit on a lot, yeah, I, yeah. He's a really good drummer, man. Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of my favorites, man. He's great, yeah, man. but yeah, yeah, this tune, this tune, I like this one, Mike. Any uh, comment on this one? No, man, a great tune. I'm pretty much with Damien on this one. 
Baby's Got great. a Locomotive. Yeah. Great, great song. Mm -hmm. I like the whiny vocal sound on it, and then it goes into this big chorus. Great song. Locomotive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool part after the chorus too, where it's like really off time. That like, yeah, you know, dude, great, great song, and it absolutely makes the list. It makes the, it makes our list. <clears throat> Next one, so fine. Never liked this one. Yeah, <clears throat> didn't like it. One of my least favorites. It's kind of like a bit too slow and you know, super mellow. You know, Duff sounds like he's drunk singing it. Yeah, Duff, we should. Yeah. <laughs> Duff, Duff is singing this one. Well, never did anything for me. <laughs> How about you? Mike? <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I think it was better. It might have been one of my least favorite back in the day. But it moved up a little bit. It was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of like he said, Duff kind of sounded drunk on it, which is probably a cool effect or whatever he put on it. Kind of a little punky sound to his voice, that little cock. Like, eh. yeah. yeah. It was just like, uh, yeah, it was different. I didn't hate it, but it just didn't make the list for me. Yeah, it, it, it kind of was a tribute to Johnny Thunders that um, yeah. played in the New York Dolls. Mm -hmm. Big influence on Duff. I guess when they wrote it, it sounded like something that Johnny Thunders would do. But um, yeah, 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 I could see that. It really don't do nothing for me either. So we're all in agreement that this don't make the list, right? All right, right. that's out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to track 11. Estranged. Yeah, I think this is another great tune. I mean, there's so many epic, epic yes. songs, man. I mean, this is this is one of them. And I remember I saw him playing uh, playing alive on the uh, on the last tour, and uh, man, everybody was just like like freaking out. I mean, it's a freaking nine minutes, nine plus minutes song. Yeah. I mean, most people would probably run to the hills to go to the bathroom or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great song, man. A lot of cool parts, epic, epic mm -hmm. parts, and you know. What do you think? See, uh, yes, for me. Oh yeah, great song, great song. I not much more to say on this one, but definitely made it, the list. I, I, I that's the video thing. Oh yeah, the video was great. Yeah, was that the one where his sneaker was in the water? He, Remember yeah, the sneaker said Axel. The <laughs> he, yeah, he's swimming with the dolphin. Or was that? Yeah. Is that the one? He's swimming with the dolphin. I think or is that so. The, I think it was. Yeah, I think it's that one. <laughs> what was that South by my weird I want to swim with the dolphins or something like that. What was that? <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean it's strange. Last song of that trilogy that we were talking about, about the short story. And um yeah, just a great song, great vocal, epic sounding. I mean, you seen where Axel was planning to go. I mean, you figured Guns N' Roses started out very street sounding with appetite, very dirty, gritty, and then the Use Your Illusions came out, and it, it kind of sounded way more epic. And then I guess when Axel was building his next thing, Chinese Democracy, you could see how he's he wasn't into just writing straightforward songs. Right. Mm -hmm. He was into writing these big epics, you know? Yeah, master, you master, masterpieces. Yeah. yeah, definitely, man, definitely. It's strange oh, makes our list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. setting the foundation for sure. Oh, absolutely. You could you could hear the build up like the from a lot of the piano part. It's so mm -hmm. it's so different than Appetite. Appetite was gritty man it was just gritty yeah. and this one was more epic uh, yeah. that's the best way i can put it is epic yeah next next album he's going to go for that celine dion sam get out of here with the <laughs> democracy who, who's celine dion <laughs> <laughs> a silly d who's a silly d silly d <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh track number 12 you could be mine oh absolutely yes yeah yeah Great song. I mean, it, it should have opened the record. Why it's track twelve on the on the on user illusion two? Weird, it's, right? It's, beyond, it's really weird, but uh, yeah, great, great freaking tune. What you would expect. I mean, oh, per, yeah. the, the perfect first single. I mean, that's what you yeah. want. I mean, yeah, that's what you've been waiting for for three years for a new single for us to hear something like that. So, Mike. Oh yeah, I mean, I was on the Terminator two. Uh, that, that was. The soundtrack so yeah, it was that was a great song it kind of pumped you up for the album even there uh, yeah that came out even a few months before the album if i remember mm -hmm. yeah so it did. yeah that, that really got you pumped up. it sounded more like something that was off of appetite yeah yeah so so yeah i mean that was definitely one definitely one of my favorite tracks off this album yeah for me everything you want in a guns and roses song mm -hmm. to me that is guns and roses that song yeah. is what guns and roses is great song all around I mean, classic GNR could probably on the, be on the top 
five GNR songs of all time, at least, I think. Yeah. You know? It's just, it's what you, like Dame said, it's what you expect. That is Jan F and R, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. That is one of the ultimate Guns N' Roses songs. And hell yeah, it makes our list. <laughs> you know? All right, so let's move on to um, the last song on the track. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm skipping one because we all need it. Track number 13, Don't Cry, the alternative version. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see this one and the next song is almost like bonus tracks, really. I mean, it, yeah. they, don't, they didn't really have to be on there. It's just kind of like, okay, hey, we wrote this. We wrote a lot of lyrics and we're just going to record it again with, you know, instead of making it uh, a nine minute song, here's two songs. Yeah, they should have called this yeah. no reason. You know, no yeah. reason. <laughs> right. Why? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's cool to hear with different, <laughs> you know, different lyrics, but yeah. yeah, it could have been, like you said, five years after we're going to release or 10 years and we're going to throw in the outtakes of or, yeah, you know, or, the demo or versions. a B side or something. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we all agree. No need for the alternate version of Don't Cry. The nah, first one nah. is, is great. Yeah. OK, so um, on the Y list, number 14. <laughs> Well, wait I a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait, what do you got there? <laughs> so, uh, look, I mean, you're like on the Y list. Actually, I, I kind of, the concept of it was kind of cool in a certain sense. It was only like, what, like a minute and a half? It's what, that. the My my World, right? You're talking right. about? It wasn't even that long. I mean, it, it, sounds, it, like it, a band's, like, it sounds like well, a band's intro to a live show. Well, right. I mean, I was going to say, like, you could even put that as number one on the album. Kind of just some goofy. As an intro? Into the as band. an intro. Right. It exactly. works as an intro. So, I didn't it probably, it, probably would have scared there. people it, away. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But I mean, I never said, oh, yeah, I want to go listen to my world. You got to listen to that in like five now. But I mean, well, thank I, God it's, it's only a minute. Long. It's only a minute. <laughs> right. 24 seconds long. Me, me and Mike are going to fight over my world. <laughs> <laughs> I Get in the ring, say. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, listen. Double knocking time, get the money, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, it's cool for what it is. Unless it's the intro of the album, I don't think it needs to be there. It's just right. I mean, the but you know, uh, yeah. From uh, from what I read, it's it, it's all it's all Axel on this one. Oh, really? All, yeah, that's cool. And he was. Getting into nine inch nails and all that industrial stuff, right. and you could definitely—that's that's like where he was leading like ten years late, ten years later, you know. But yeah, it's weird. I always thought it was a weird song for me as a kid. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, and as we're going to break it down to thirteen songs, I'm sure some people might agree, some people might disagree. I'm sure most of it, people agree on probably eighty five, ninety percent of it, is that um, it's it's a real. They're both good albums. But you could have put out one great album. So with that being said, yeah, Dame's going to give you the list. Going to going to give everybody the playlist for yeah. Mixed so uh, you know we're all listening. Majority of us were listening to uh, cassettes back then. So I, I figured it out like side one and side two. So side one would be uh, you could be mine, followed by Dustin Bones, Yesterday's Bad Obsession, Don't Cry. Double Talk and Jive would close side one. And then open and side two would be Civil War, Locomotive, November Rain, Pretty Tied Up, Estranged, The Garden, and Coma. Sounds like a good record so. to me, man. Absolutely. That's a good list. That could have been almost it's a good like, mixtape. Yeah, it's a great mixtape. It could have been like, you know, almost the second appetite, you know? You, you would probably have to one had to buy one of those TDK 120 minute <laughs> cassette tapes. <laughs> oh, I used to have tons of them. Yeah, they're the one. They even had 180 minute ones too. I even had had some of those. You know, for like the mega mixtape. You know, dude, I was a fan of the 120 <laughs> minute one. Yeah, you know, you would get like you know three records or something like that on there. You know, <laughs> or you would make like an awesome two hour mixtape. You know. <laughs> No, the, the, wor- the worst were like the 60 minute tapes. You know, it's like you can't fit anything. Can't fit know? nothing. Dude, I'm so bad when I do playlists. This is, <laughs> this is how nuts I am. When I do playlists, and I'm going to actually put this out there. When I do a playlist, if it's somebody that has, if it's a band that has two records out, 
I give a, I give 60 minutes. I can only get six. I don't want to put no more than 60 minutes. If I, if there's a band like kiss or something like that, no more than two hours. So I'm sitting there like a wacko for no reason, <laughs> trying to make it only two hours. Can't go over, you know, two minutes. <laughs> right. I'm going to give you a minute, but you can't go over. Cause in my craziness, I'm thinking like, ah, oh, it's a two hour mix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I got two things for you guys today. For uh, to put you on the spots. Oh man! <laughs> First thing is because we're talking Guns and Roses and Chinese Chinese democracy. So, uh, damn, you're ordering Chinese food right now. What are you ordering? Ah, uh, beef lo mein, easy. Beef lo mein, huh? Well, yeah, with extra. You know, I always like. I love the hot sauce. Right, right. <laughs> you know the packets of it, but the ones that they give you is never as hot as the ones that they sell. That they or not that they sell, but they give you inside the restaurant. You know, yes. you, you go to Chinatown, you ask for a hot mustard, not a hot sauce, hot mustard. Go get the house, and, you know. It, yeah, and it comes in, you know, like a like a canister or whatever. That <laughs> shit is is like friggin' blazing hot. I yeah. love that stuff. You got to ask for it when I order out. If I get like wonton yeah. soup, my wife likes to put in wonton soup also. So we get the house mustard. Big difference. Clear, yeah, the people made right for me. How about you, Mike? Uh, right now, I, I I would say the general's chicken, man. I, it's, I've been on a general's chicken kick for a while. For me, I would go with the general's chicken, but I get, I'll get the, the combination dinner. I want more bang for my buck. <laughs> I want that egg roll. <laughs> well, you, you didn't tell oh, me that was involved, too, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm getting the combo. Combination chicken. platter. Yeah. Combination right. platter. Come on over, Damien. Bert C- C- <laughs> C- C12. C12. Dude, it's great. You could spend, if all three of us order, we could spend like 20 bucks and eat for two days, you know? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, you know it's C12. Funny. I just got. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny with Chinese food? Maybe, maybe it's a, maybe it's an American thing, or maybe it's just me. I don't know. But uh Am I the only one that always orders like the same three things? <laughs> no. No, it's nope. true. It's it's either yeah. beef o' mein, General Chow's chicken, or like, you know, beef and broccoli. It's the only things I order. Dude, I like that. The General's chicken, because I never knew how to say it. You know, is yeah. it General Chow? Is it General, General. So? Is it General yeah. So? General I go with the So. so. Yeah. It's almost like <laughs> it's almost like if you're when people say, you know, we're, all three of us are Italian, when you're at if you get macaronis and, you know, you got gava deals, you could say, but it's hard to say uh, yucky or nucky. <laughs> yeah, I still yeah, can't yeah. say nuckies, it right. Nuckies, 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 nuckies. Nuckies. <laughs> you know, you got your one buddy who don't know no better. He's like, Ganoches. I'll take the ganoches. <laughs> 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 I mean, I still can't say it right either, but I'll fake it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, just like we went to, uh, what was it, uh, What's that Italian place? I don't even want to say Italian place. That Olive Garden. <laughs> no, 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 you can't say that. No, it's not Italian. It's That's not like Italian the Seven Eleven of, uh, of whatever. Oh. The fuck. <laughs> right, <laughs> might kick yeah. himself out of the room. So, no, no, I just uh, tipped over. So it's like saying Panda Express is Chinese food. Or uh, no, wait, I've what, never eaten there. <laughs> no, the, uh, me neither. Wait, what, what's the Chinese food equivalent of uh, Olive Garden? It's like. Like fancy, oh, oh, um, k- k- oh my God! I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Chow yeah. man, it begins, with, it begins with a C. I know that something oh, chow. Shit, Calab- Calabrese. No, nah, we're it, talking about the Chinese place. Oh, the you Chinese. Go to, you, they're usually like you know, if you go to a mall, it's usually like you know, it's a big name. Yeah, it's like if you see them in cas- they're in casinos and stuff. Yeah, and you think it's all fancy at first. Yeah, you know? yeah. Is it like the panda, the golden panda, or something like that? Yeah. Or- ah, shit. I know, I know exactly put, what you're talking about. On, put it up on the video. Oh, I guess did, didn't South Park do an episode on this? I think. Uh, oh, what the hell was it? Uh? I'm going to look it up now. <laughs> I know the name. I just can't figure it out. Oh man. We're all looking here. Say- yeah. We're driving I'm people like, crazy with it. No, I'm like, you look. I'm just sitting back. Everybody's screaming out. P.F. Chang's. P.F. Chang's. That's it. That's it. P.F. Chang's. That's it, Dame. I've yeah. never eaten there. No, me neither. Uh, yeah, it's like upscale Chinese food, but, you know, it's Dude, all Americans there. You did know, you ever really notice Chinese. the two things people do? Well, one is when somebody orders Chinese food, how come everybody screams? I'll take a chicken low main like they don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you got the lady on the other line taking your order and sounds like she's rushing off the phone. I'll take egg foo young. What else? What I think is what else? What else? And I'm like, all right, hold yeah. on. I got a couple things here. <laughs> you know, 
Okay, but, number 17, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> slow down. Slow down. <laughs> then they then they give me that free California roll, and I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. you know? Now you're making me want sushi, so. Sushi. Whew, that's another <laughs> episode. <laughs> uh, so um, I got one more thing for you guys. It's a little bit of a surprise. Speaking of getting the ring, do you remember sometime? I guess it was the early 90s where they had the big thing with Vince Neal calls out Axl Rose. Who do you think yeah. would have took that match, Dane? Uh, I'm going with Vince. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. How about I, you, Mike? I, oh, I, always yeah. saw, uh, I always saw Axel's like kind of like, uh, kind of like whiny bitchy but kind of like real scrappy too but i, I yeah. think i think i think vince could really kick some ass yeah uh, man mm. like i i think axel will probably like pull his hair and try to bite him and maybe scratch him <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, I, but I, I think i think vince would just like lay him out wow what about you mike I don't know. I mean, I, I think Axel, just because he's, you know, he's got that bipolar and he, 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 he <laughs> you know, Vince might, uh, Vince might cheat. I don't know, but I definitely see Axel cheating, <laughs> pulling some hair, kicking a nut, you know, something like that. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I, I would say maybe, maybe Axel, because Axel's, <laughs> Axel's got that wiry. You gotta watch out for those wiry guys. <laughs> Axel's kind of wiry, scrappy. And I guess it all really depends on how whacked out Vince is at the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to somehow test out this theory. Yeah. We're going to go to well, Time Machine? <laughs> well, we, no, no, no. We're, we're going to have to test Are we going to have out. creative wrestlers on, on PlayStation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I, I, I think uh, in, in 2020, I think Vince has a slight weight advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I, yada, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they both have gained some weight. I mean, they're in, these are in their late 50s 60 years absolutely old. I mean, what, shit, what do you expect I mean. shit i'm 40 and i'm about 30 pounds over so uh <laughs> i know how it feels brother <laughs> but, he, uh, he's the only one that's probably like normal out of us like dude you opened up for vince before right yeah i met him uh I, yeah. i'm i'm pretty friendly with his with his drummer uh zoltan oh yeah that guy's good that guy's crazy yeah, yeah. yeah. so really good usually drummer. when they're when they when they play around like he'll get in touch with me or I'll do that to him. Ask you know if, if I want to go to a show. Like we saw him uh, a few times. You know, hook us up backstage. But one one time, uh, funny story is uh, Vince played down Atlantic City about two years ago, right? And uh, he hooked us up with uh, tickets and passes to the show. And then so afterwards, we're waiting to go backstage. Uh, me and me and Donna, and uh, we're hanging out with Zoltan, Vince's drummer you know, in his dressing room for, uh, we we're, we we're talking for like two hours easy. Oh, wow. And like, uh, at one point, Donna had to use the bathroom in, in the dressing room. So right. she's in the bathroom. Vince Neil walks in and, uh, he's, he's fucking hammered, man. He's <laughs> blitz out of his, out of his mind, but he's like, he's ho trying to hold it together. Right. So, yeah. So uh, Zoltan introduces me to him and like in my mind, like telepathically, I'm trying to like reach out to Donna to tell her to get out of the bathroom, you know, like <laughs> come out of the bathroom. You know, like I'm trying to yeah. like, you know, obviously <laughs> I, don't, I don't have those powers, but she, <laughs> she she comes out of the bathroom and Vince is there and she's like, oh, my God, I ain't, I ain't doing Vince. And, he, you know, he was loving her and everything, but he was cool, man. He was really cool. Was like, What's know? up, baby? <laughs> yeah, he was really friendly and uh so uh, from that point on, Zoltan, when we talk about him, he always, he's, you know, refers to him as Uncle Vince. You know, right, right. <laughs> dude, I heard he's a laid back dude. I heard he's I heard he's really cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, he was, you know, typical Californian dude, real laid back. You know, yeah. And I heard the same thing about Axel. I heard when Axel was here yeah. at the Electric Factory, he hung out with people to late hours. Like he stood out pretty late with everybody. Uh, you hear crazy stuff about Axel, but every time I knew somebody that personally was around him, they say he's great. Me too, man. I, you know, as far as <coughs> all the horror stories you've heard about him from years ago, I mean, he, I think the guy's really, you know, really changed. You know, he's really turned the new leaf. And the few people that I know have met him, some said the same thing, nothing but great things about yeah. the guy, you know. A, a yeah. friend of mine who lives out in Vegas, he's met him like two or three times. And, uh, you know, before the guy would even say, hey, you know, could we take a picture? You know, Axel was like, yo, man, yeah, what's up? Let's, you know, it's, yeah. take a photo you know and yeah dude and but, you know 
not to put Dame out there or nothing, but Dame's also opened up for Guns N' Roses on their stadium tour. They he played Philly when you know when Guns yeah, came yeah. here, which was dude, so proud. We were so proud of you, man. All, nice. all the guys. You know, you had the big screen, and it was cool that Guns N' Roses actually hooked up the video camera for you guys to come through that screen that was showing. Yeah, it was. Because you don't see bands do that. That was awesome. You yeah, know, yeah, they gave us uh, <laughs> when we got when we got there right before sound check. You know, the the stage manager is like telling us what we can and do, can't yeah. do. And honestly, there wasn't really many rules like what not to do. Like, you know, you had the huge, the huge ramps behind you know, behind the stage and everything. So, you know, the guy was like, yeah, whatever you guys do, you know, just don't go on the ramps. Right. And I was like, okay, how about, how about the catwalk? You know, could we go on the catwalk? And he was like, oh yeah, you guys could go on. Oh, that's on great, man. Axel's catwalk. And, you know, you could go down that end and, you know, it was pretty much the only thing we couldn't do was the ramp. Go yeah. on the ramp. Yeah. Which is obvious. You know, but that's but, great, dude. That, I mean, they yeah. treat you guys well. That's, that's, that's really cool, man. Yeah. 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 So all, you hear all them stories. This is firsthand saying that Guns N' Roses treated him awesome. Yep. And they, <laughs> and they went on on time. And I and I yeah. and they then they hooked us up with uh, they played in New York at Giant Stadium, well North Jersey, like a week or two later. And uh, they gave us tickets and passes, you know, for the show. Yeah. Uh, for that show. So uh, yeah, I mean, my experience have always been really nice. And for the record. Because I, I got to correct people all the time on Facebook whenever they talk shit about Axel being like two, three hours late. Dude, he has, he has not been late in, in ages. He's, he <laughs> shows up on time. In, in yeah. fact, we saw him in Hershey, and he was like 10 minutes early. <laughs> Here you, you go. Know, so so he, he's not, you know, it's not like the People Axel. got the wrong idea. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it, that was a huge tour. I mean, there's contracts. I mean... <clears throat> You yeah, know, man. not to say like, you know, he didn't really care about that stuff years ago. But now, I mean, I think the guy matured. He plays by the rules a bit. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Guns N' Roses, one of the biggest bands ever, you know. So uh, thank you guys for hearing the podcast. It's Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes. Please like, subscribe, forward it, put it out there. Looking to get as many people as we could to start listening to us. And if you have any ideas, shoot us a couple ideas. We're open to any ideas. So uh, if you want to hear us talk about anything, just let us know. So uh, another episode of Mixtapes. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you guys for hanging out. Take care. Bye.